Councillor Gould, we're ready to begin when you are. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, PAT is all set. Okay, Allison, we have one problem. Mr. Delp, who is talking about Granite Street, uh, Granite Road flooding issues, is having trouble with his audio. He has the video, but he's struggling with his audio, and I wasn't uh, adept enough at figuring it out for him. Well, sometimes you need to have an external microphone. I don't know if he has one. Okay. Um, we'll get going, and if we can, uh, if we have to pause, if he wants to speak, we'll so be it. You could also give him the phone number to call in. He tried that. He's tr he is trying that. Excuse me. So we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, like to call the order the Industrial Community Development Committee, uh, of which I'm the chair. Uh, in attendance is Councilor Sharris, I believe, Councilor McGinn, Councilor Melville, and Councilor O'Neill. All four present. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, number one, first on the agenda was the status of city-owned property, and as we all uh, received a email from the mayor, respectfully uh, wishing to reschedule that. That's what we're going to do for. Uh, the first meeting in September, but we'll talk about that later, Allison, if we can, please. Next on the agenda is the fine property, uh, 143 Linfield Street. Uh, Mr. Bellavance is here, but uh, this is a motion by Councillor Turco, so I'll let Councillor Turco have the floor, please. Councillor Turco. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, this won't be a long um, issue to, of discussion. I just, uh, it was basically informational that um, the fine building, the owners of the fine building comp tank went before um, Conservation Commission on August 5th to start remediation on the property, which is, is great news for that property. Um, the initial remediation will, will be um, petroleum, excuse me, let me find my, no, petroleum remediation in three spots. Originally it was scheduled for five spots. Um, Two of those, I guess, were well outside the buffer area, so they're not, uh, they weren't included with CONCOM. And essentially, um, it's, it's exactly what it says. They'll remove some um, old oils and fuels from different sectors of the site. It'll be stored on the site for three months, uh, well, up to three months, while they find somewhere to dispose of that. Um, also discussed um, by Mr. Donovan um, through CONCOM, which who I hope is here tonight, was a drainage pipe that runs through that property, which was part of a, a flood mitigation project that the city, city did a decade ago, which is blocked. And he had some concerns about um, whether the remediation um, would disturb soil um, and then flush that soil through the uh, pipe into um, Craig's Pond, you know, Goldwith Brook. Um, if Russ is here, he was going to speak on that briefly if nobody has any objection to that. But my primary concern and why I asked Mr. Bellavance to be here, and, and you'll see this um, in some of the, um, the late ads, and I'm going to move to receive um, items two through seven, uh, which pertain to the uh, community um, ICD hearing tonight. Uh, move to receive. You heard the motion by Councillor Turco. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Councillor Turco. Thank you. So you'll see in, in the items two through seven. Unfortunately, through there needs to be a roll call taken. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Allison, please. Councillor Charis? Yes. Councillor McGinn? Yes. Councillor Melville? Yes. Councillor O'Neill? Yes. Councillor Gould? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Turco, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Rob. So you'll see items two and three in the late ads pertain to um, what was approved by CONCOM, the determination of applicability and um, the special conditions applied thereof, um, if anybody has any interest in, in those. Um, late ad four was a letter from Brendan Callahan to um, Council Welton and I, and basically what it informed us of was that ComTank was seeking a loan from the uh, Brownsfield Revolving Fund, which is held by Peabody and Salem for to clean up contaminated sites. 
I, I was a, a little upset to hear that um, the city um, had intention of speaking in favor of that loan, whereas if you read in items five and six from the collector's office as well as the um, treasurer's office that this property is in tax title. Um, they, well, they owe well over a half million. I didn't add up all the numbers, it's, but it's well over a half million dollars in back taxes. And, and I, I don't feel as though the city should condone um, or speak in favor of any type of loan being given to this company, ComTank. Um, I'm glad they want to clean it up, but they should do it at their cost. Um, and if they'd like help from the city, maybe they should look at paying their taxes first. So through you, Mr. Chairman, to um, Mr. Bellavance. Kurt, where do we stand on, on the loan? Because I did hear during the um, Com Com ConCom hearing that DEP um, and, and the EPA had approved the loan. Uh, is, is that still, uh, does that still stand that way, that this loan is approved? Councilor Bellavance, uh, uh, Mr. Bellavance, please, sorry. I've elevated you already, Kurt. <laughs> Is that an elevation? That's an elevation. <laughs> um, oh, maybe not. Actually, maybe not. <laughs> uh, uh, good evening. I'm uh, Kurt Pellevance, uh, Director of uh, Community uh, Development for the City of Peabody. Um, uh, what uh, Councillor Turco, Turco was speaking about is a, um, a grant that the City of Peabody and Salem uh, received. Uh, they worked jointly on that to get a, uh, some funding to do uh, Brownfields loans uh, for a uh, little interest uh, to different uh, applicants. The, they look around to different uh, projects in Salem and Peabody to see, you know, who, who basically who needs these types of funding to, for cleaning up. Um, this was one case that uh, the site was, as we all know, is uh, dirty, uh, and there's uh, some need for cleaning up. So they had inquired about that. Um, our, our office, Brennan Callan, had provided them with the uh, the necessary paperwork uh, to work with Salem and um, and Peabody, and basically through the uh, the due diligence process. Uh, it, we were uh, informed of the um, the back taxes that they owe, and certainly, um, if if our office was looking unfavorably upon this, we would want to um, make sure those taxes were uh, paid up before we uh, issued a loan. Um, but ultimately, uh, Mayor Betancourt would have the decision on whether something like this would be uh, granted or not through our um, our assistance. Um, he has informed uh, Mr. Callanham, myself, that he's not in support of this, uh, which is not a surprise to us, considering the uh, the issues with the back taxes. So, as far as um, as we're concerned, there there is no uh, loan to be given to um, to ComTank at this time. And I don't know if Brendan, if you wanted to add anything else in regards to that. Mr. Callahan, would you like to speak on that? Sure. Um, good evening, Brendan Callahan, Assistant Director of Planning. Um, and, and uh, oversee the our, uh, Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund for the on behalf of the city of Peabody. Uh, yeah, at this time, we have not issued a loan to the property owner. Um, they were just, they had been going through the process um, and, you know, learning of the back taxes issues has kind of stopped that process at this time. Uh, and we've informed the property owner that that, that, need, that issue needs to be, you know, at a minimum, that issue needs to re be resolved uh, before moving forward. Okay. Councilor Turco, would you like to make a motion so that the, the this subcommittee is on record that we don't approve the loan or the council is, as a whole is not in, not in favor of the loan unless the taxes are paid? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, that was that was my intention and, and I, I will make that motion. Um, I'll hold off for one second. I, I just wanted to say thank you to Kurt and Brendan for addressing it um, when it came up. But um, in, in the future, Kurt, do we, I just want to know, do we always make sure that the taxes are paid? Um, because I, even with this going before CONCOM, I had issue with that. Um, this council wouldn't hear a special permit with back taxes being owed. So I'm not sure why our city boards um, hear these applications from petitioners that owe this amount of money to the city. Um, but Mr. Bellavance, please. Uh, yeah, certainly that's the, that's a process. It's part of the due diligence process. I mean, certainly they could go before a conservation commission and and get approval through that process to clean up the, the site, which hopefully that's what they'll they'll do. Um, we're a separate. It's a separate uh, group that would be issuing that loan, and as they go through this process and it, we determine that there's uh, there's issues with that, then basically we put it to a halt. Um, 
but I mean, they're hopefully, uh, if they do come up with their own revenue source, uh, they'll be able to clean that site up. Again, thank you both very much. And uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to follow through with that motion um, that the, I guess the motion would be that the council is not in favor of issuing a uh, loan from the revolving, uh, the Brownsville revolving loan fund for the site uh, or any site that uh, is in arrears of their property taxes. So moved. You, you heard the motion by Councilor Turco. Roll call vote, please. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Councilor Turco, you still have the floor. Anything uh, uh, more on? Before I um, end it, I just wanted to make sure, does anybody see Mr. Donovan in the uh, queue to speak? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you have a, 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 an issue with Mr. Donovan speaking for a couple of minutes? Of course not. We'd welcome Mr. Donovan. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, welcome Mr. Donovan. You have the floor. Thank you very much. For the record, my name is Russell Donovan, 12 Queer Road, South Haven. Um, I appreciate your, your, your letting me speak about this issue. As most of you know, I live right down the street from this project. And uh, I just want to give a little history and I'll keep it short. Uh, about 10 years ago, I talked to Brendan Kelly about this uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the city did a major flood mitigation project to increase the storage capacity in the upper uh, portion of that property for retention basin. And surprising to me at that time is that they did not take care of the uh, drainage that goes down to uh, Craig's Pond. Um, about 10 years ago, then Ward 1 Councillor Barry Osborne, I think you all know him, I actually dragged him out of his house to go see the runoff from that discharge up on the retention pond that was undermining the then existing railroad tracks because of the uh, drainage up there. And I mentioned it to the Conservation Commission that any project for remediation should take care of uh, the drainage that comes from that retention pond because as they, they omitted what they were going to do for taking care of that project of the blockage on the drainage. And as I told them then at, uh, on the August 5th meeting that uh, the eight inch piping that they were considering, I suggested to them based on my experience, and I sent them pictures to the Conservation Commission of the runoff, uh, a, a, two, a two foot drainage system should be put in there. And as the uh, expert for the uh, petitioner mentioned that, uh, you know, there's an 84 acre site up in the upper area from uh, Centennial Park, as I mentioned to, at the hearing, is that it doesn't decrease the flow, it just maintains the capacity of the uh, retention pond coming out. So to make the long story short, before the city approves any uh, public funds and, and grants or uh, loans, uh, they should consider doing the project right the first time and make sure that the uh, drainage or the capacity of that system is adequate to take care of the needs of the neighborhood. And uh, there's a long history up there and uh, I'll keep it short and brief. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Donovan. Um, Mr. Councilor Turco, we, we have um, Mr. Labossier in the queue if you're interested in having his input, but you still have the floor, Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my intention was actually to, uh, to talk to Mr. Labossier about the next issue on the agenda, but while we have him here, Bob, if you're, if you're on, um, can you um, have... Um, one of your engineers take a look at uh, what was approved by CONCOM um, as well as the LSP for the site to make sure that um, this pipe is adequate for drainage into Craig's Pond and Goldwaith. 
um, the eight-inch pipe. It did come up, and I want to say thank you to Mr. Uh, Chairman Rizzo from Concom. He listened to Mr. Donovan's advice and um, asked that that pipe be repaired uh, prior to any other work beginning. But uh, the issue of whether it be an eight-inch pipe or a 12-inch pipe uh, was of question there. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, through you to Mr. Labossier, uh, I, Bob, I'm not sure if you even know anything about this project, but if you can, could you speak on it? Mr. Labossier, you have the floor, please. Okay, Bob Labossier, Director of Public Services for the City of Peabody. Um, I'm not up to speed on this particular site and the, the piping for it. Um, Will Pollitt, our city engineer, reviews um, most of the plans that come in through CONCOM, so I will um, discuss that with him tomorrow to see if he's up to speed on it. But we'll take a look at the whole site. Thank you, Mr. Labossier. Councilor Turco, please. That's it, Bob. Thank you very much. I kind of—I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I knew that this was um, a little outside your uh, purview there. But thank you, and Council Gould. I am all set. Uh, thank you. Item. Uh, sure. If I can, for one second, any other councilors like to weigh in on, on this discussion in regards to the L Fine Building? There being none, uh, we're going to move to Granite Road flooding issues. Councilor Turco, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you can see by late ad number seven um, on, what day was this? Uh, March 21st of 2019, we held a, um, a me meeting, a finance committee meeting to approve a capital budget. And within that capital budget were two funds. One, I don't have my glasses, but it was $600,000 for water system improvements and an additional $200,000 for stormwater drainage upgrades. Um, there was quite a discussion ab about those two funds and what they would be used for. I believe Council Sassel had several questions about the, the uh, stormwater drains. But my concern mainly, um, and Mr. Delp from Granite Road was at that meeting, was the resolution of his flooding issues caused by a subdivision approved um, just above him at Granite Road Extension which left him and the Williams um, to deal with flooding almost every time it rained. And I, I haven't seen any work begin there. And now looking at the balances of those accounts, it looks like there's a zero balance in the 600000 And in the $200,000 account, there is a balance of 157589 which initially I was happy about, but then after re-watching the meeting from March of 2019 um, and listening to the mayor's words on this, the money was actually supposed to come out of the 600000 um, according to what he said. And he actually mentioned um, several spots that would be addressed. He had, had mentioned uh, Martinac Ave, Coolidge Ave, um, some spots off of Linfield Street, which I believe he was referring to, Quail Road, um, Glendale Ave um, in the Browns Pond area. And the reason why I wanted to discuss this today is uh, not only because Mr. Delp had reached out to me for an update, but also through looking at those streets um, and the phone calls that I've gotten just in the last three months, and I believe Council Walton has also gotten of those phone calls. We have Mr. Sotteropoulos on, on Quail Road, um, as well as, um, what is his name? Um, Mr. Sacramoni on, on Quail Road that uh, are still dealing with issues. Fortunately, the water is low right now, but Mr. Sotoropoulos at, at, in his mid-70s goes out on, on a every three-month basis to clean Goldwaith Brook to make sure that the water flows so that upstream from him as well as himself and his neighbors don't get flooded. Um, he can't do that anymore at 75 years old. We have um, Martinac and Woodlawn. We have... Um, the water flows down Martinac through a woman's driveway and into her neighbor's yard over on Coolidge. That was supposed to be addressed, or, or at least um, the beginnings of it. Uh, we have Ann and Tom Kench that call regularly about Glendale Ave and a dam that forms in the wetlands, that's dam, D-A-M, in the wetlands behind Glendale. Um, we have the, the Brotons. Um, Cheryl and Andrew, those are on Coolidge, they've lost thousands of dollars worth of, of items because the water flows down Montanac into their yard. 
So uh, my, my point is, all these things we, we were told a year and a half ago would be addressed, and I haven't seen any of them addressed yet. We have 75-year-old residents that are trying to do their part to try to uh, mitigate this on their own, and, and I don't think they're able to do it anymore. So I guess th through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Labossier, can you give me a status on any of these areas and, and where exactly the $600,000 went that's no longer um, available in the 200000 Thank you, Councillor Turco. Uh, Councillor, uh, Mr. Labossier, if you would, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I don't know where the $600,000 is or was, or that's not my account. Um, I can tell you on the $200,000 account, we spent the, the difference between the 200 and the 157. Um, we used that money for Granite Road. We hired AECOM to do a drainage analysis. Um, I know I am no longer using AECOM because of the length of time it took them to do the drainage analysis up there. They did give us a report. They gave us several options um, with what they found in the drainage report. Um, we picked one of the options and now our own engineering department has started a review of the area to see if we, we can fit the pipe that they um, have come up with it's a it's an increase from an 18 inch drainage pipe to a 36 inch drainage pipe that would be a relief for the drain manhole in front of Mr. Delp's house it would go down Granite Ave right to Brown's Pond but we have to find out if we can fit that within the drain and within the uh, corridor that we have to see if it can get through and buy all the sewer services and water services. So we're still doing, we're still under design for that. We're hoping to get that in before winter, but as you know, it's been an awful busy um, summer for us and um, purchasing as well has had a lot of bidding to put out. So trying to find time to get that out has, has been difficult for us, but that is definitely in the works. That's the only project that I've been asked to work on. Um, so I don't have an update for any, I mean, a lot of those other ones you mentioned, I didn't even know about. I know I've talked about Martinic, but that's something that can be taken care of. We hope through just redoing the, the road itself out there and getting gutter lines and crowns put in place. Councilor Turco, you're on the floor, please. Thank you. Uh, so, so, Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, Mr. Labossi here. So, Bob, with the remaining 157,000, I think it was, is that enough money to actually address Mr. Delp's issues um, in the recommendations by the engineering firm? So, I'm hoping it is. Um, if we have to go out to bid, it probably will not be. If I can do if I'm able to do it through time and materials, um, through a rental of excavation um, on a day rate or a weekly rate, I'm hoping that we can get that 36 inch main line put in um, using an outside service. We would purchase all the materials. And if we're able to do that and still meet our requirements of 30B, then I think, yes, we could. Um, if not, I, we would probably have to um, request a, an additional amount of money. Councilor Turco, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm just, I'm, not to hop on it, I, I'm just confused about the location of the $600,000, as I think most of the council would probably be, uh, have the same concerns I do. It, it's actually listed as water systems improvements. Um, so I, I think that you're, you're wearing two hats now, Bob. Am I, am I not mistaken by that, that you're actually the uh, water and superintendent and the DPS director, unfortunately? For yes, you. I mean, it's always, it, it's always been underneath me. Um, all I can tell you about the 600 is that we did not spend that. Okay, so, so we need to. So I'll, I'll make a motion to, to ask uh, Mr. Gingrich at some point at the end of this hearing um, where that, if he can let us know where that $600,000 is. But just in reference to the other projects that I mentioned, Bob, um, yep. you, you were at the meeting in March um, of 2019, and all those projects were mentioned by the mayor at the podium. And you know, if, if you could go back and, and maybe check on some of those, and I'll also speak to the mayor um, 
about his intentions with those. These were projects that actually he brought up um, through conversations with those residents that I mentioned. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe the 600,000 is somewhere to be had, but even if it's not, um, couldn't we do some of these projects through the, um, the water fund, the uh, enterprise fund, Bob? I know that Mike said that we were in the red this year, but next year we were scheduled to be well in the green um, with the enterprise fund. Mr. Um, Labos, you have please. Yeah, we would not be able to use the enterprise fund for that because the enterprise fund can only be used on water infrastructure and sewer infrastructure, not for drainage. Okay. So the yeah, so the money that ratepayers are paying for their water service and their sewer service, you're only allowed to use that money in relations to drinking water and to sewage. Thank you very much, Bob. I just I, I hope Mr. Delp's happy to hear that um, your commitment that prior to the winter um, we may have this resolved. Um, so with that, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, if you want to defer to Mr. Delp, he can do. I that. would like to, Councillor Turco. Yes, please, if that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Delp. Would, Mr. Delp, would you like to speak on uh, the topic if you're tuned in and have uh, audio, please? Maybe we don't have Mr. Delp like we thought we did. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, I would like to say that tomorrow I can reach out to Mr. Delp and go over it all with him as well. Thank you, Mr. Lavoisier. Uh, Mr. Delp, uh, going once, going twice. Uh, Mr. Delp, if you're listening, um, Superintendent Lavoisier will reach out to you tomorrow and discuss the project and see if he can have some answers for you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Labasia. Uh, Councilor Turco, do you have any other motions in regards to this or any comments in regards before I open it up to the rest of the council? Yeah, I will make one motion. Um, I just wanted to say that um, on behalf of Mr. Delp, because he couldn't speak for himself, he's been extremely patient and respectful and uh, never calls angry, um, calls just for status updates, and um, the, he's a true gentleman, and I want to thank him for that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think as He's done his part for the city, and I think it's time we do our part. But with that, I'll fall with a, a motion to uh, the finance director, Mr. Gingrich, to, to get um, a status on, because I can't read the numbers, uh, Madam Clerk, maybe you could just um, copy them off there for me. It's the water system improvements uh, for $600,000 from the capital um, budget from March 21st, 2019 and ask him for a status of those funds and where they were allocated. Thank you, Councillor Turco. You heard the motion by Councillor Turco. Any, any comments by fellow councillors? Councillor Gould, where Councillor Turco is not on your subcommittee, would you defer that? Yes, yeah, please. Would Thank you, you, Mr. President. Um, would Councillor McGinn or Melville or Sharist or uh, O'Neill, please? This is Councillor McGinn. Uh, go ahead, Councilor McGinn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, move to request that the Director of Finance provide detail on the expenditure uh, in the uh, for account 300 in an amount of $600,000, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councilman McGinn. You heard the motion by Councilman McGinn. Any comments? There being none, roll call, please. Council Charis. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Any other uh, issues before the industrial community development? There being none, uh, I'd like to take uh, have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Roll call vote, please. Councilor Charis. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five we, to zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are adjourned. Thank you.